Welcome everybody, it's your brother Newbreed, coming through with another live stream. Witches and warlocks, they are out to rob you of your energy. These witches and warlocks come in many forms, brothers and sisters. These individuals are parasites. They're energy vampires. They're here to extract you of your spiritual voltage and your light. And these individuals are roaming free in society. They're practically everywhere. And you gotta be aware, we are in spiritual warfare. And there's a lot of people rising up against the chosen. There's a lot of people who are systematically targeting those who bear the light. Brothers and sisters, the, the Bible tells us in Leviticus 20 and 27, a man also or a woman that have a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. The Most High God does not embrace witches, warlocks, the new age, magic, sorcery, divination, spells. He doesn't, he doesn't embrace none of that. He condemns it. And although we're not out here stoning anybody and we haven't taken the law into our own hands, you got to realize the Most High God is going to destroy these individuals. Uh, just because Christ came as the ultimate sacrifice, so we're not out here stoning people anymore, doesn't mean that the Most High doesn't have a cake bake for him. Doesn't mean that he has he doesn't have a a end planned out for these individuals who target you, brothers and sisters. Some of you all grew up in situations where you were exposed to these things on a regular basis. Y'all, let me tell you, there's so many brothers and sisters that's hit me up that are dealing with this firsthand in their family. I'm talking about getting nightmares, sleep paralysis, um, you know, losing their minds because there's people around them that are into certain esoteric practices. They are practitioners of the craft. And there's a lot of people who are dealing with monitoring spirits. Uh, they're dealing with surveillance, firsthand surveillance. and. It's taking a toll on them. And I gotta give you some scriptural backing to basically allow you to be able to push through this because as of lately, I've been under attack. So I'm speaking as well from experience, dealing with smear campaigns, um, lies, windows, rumors, uh, people rising up, doing magic, trying to disrupt my sleep, disrupt my peace because ladies and gentlemen, these individuals do have the power to send demonic forces among you. And it's important that you don't give them a point of entry. It's important that you don't feed off of, or they don't feed off your light. You cannot engage these individuals. You cannot, it's nothing you can say when they attack, when they put their spells out there, when they try to leech on. They've already made a decision that that's what the goal was, to actually conduct witchcraft and sorcery and magic against you and for you to respond to certain things and this goes for people you may not even deem as a witch or a warlock but you got to understand anybody who's manipulative anybody who is always trying to make something out of nothing create a narrative that doesn't exist we talking about those people out there in your lives that's constantly trying to make situations out of nothing we're talking about those people who attack you blindly. We talk about people who throw stones and hide their hands in your life. Uh, you cannot engage them. There's nothing you can do or say. There's already, listen, they already made a decision to work with Satan, to work with the enemy. Leviticus 20 and 6 tells us, And the soul that turneth after such as a familiar, let me read that again. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, 
to go whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from being among his people. So even the people who entertain, the people who entertain these witches, warlocks, the Almighty said, I will even cut them off from being among their people. See, everybody who look like you ain't of you, brothers and sisters. All skin folk ain't kin folk. And there's gonna be certain individuals who are automatically positioned in life to be your enemy. They're there to be a plant. They're there to be a scoffer. They're there to be a hater. They're there to be a backbiter. So they're looking for anybody who would hate you, hate your light. I mean, they're scouring the streets. They're scouring your workplace. They're scouring your neighborhood for people who hate you. So they can all come together and, create, and generate tension against you, generate pressure against you, have you stressed, have you worried, have you paranoid. And they'll attack you from different angles. The Lord said even those who went whoring after those people, you know, in the name of entertainment on social media, on social media, you'll know somebody be evil and demented but you go whoring after them because they entertain you for whatever reason. Or you just have absolute hatred for a person without cause and you want to entertain that behavior. The Lord says, listen, even I will cut them people off. I'm even going to cut them off. So this is why you don't give them your energy. And, you know, sometimes we got to learn certain things the hard way because we are all work in progress. But you're definitely not supposed to give these people the attention because once you give them a point of entry, they're able to feed off that and feast off, off of that. They're nothing without you, brothers and sisters. They're parasites, right? Deuteronomy 18 and 10 says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, an observer of times, an enchanter, or a witch. So we're talking about there's people out there in the world who sacrifice their children unto Moloch. This is real. This still goes on to this day. There's nothing new under the sun. There's people who go out there to take their children to the clinic to get them the, the pointy thing. And that's passing their children through the fires of Moloch. There's people who take their children down to uh, the mall around Christmas time and sit their child on some man's lap who's wearing red who calls himself satan claus or santa claus right that's passing your children through the fire of moloch right there's people who got their children doing easter egg hunts reverencing the queen mother goddess of heaven and the goddess of fertility right that's passing your children through the fire of moloch there's so many more witches than you can ever imagine every neighborhood within the united states practically every neighborhood has a witch overseeing it and we're not just talking about just in the United States. We're talking about spread abroad. There's wizards. There's people in city council groups who are into some weird stuff. We're talking about straight out pentagrams in their home, in their basement. We're talking about bloodletting is going on. People that you would deem highly revered within your community could be working for them people. They downright into the dark arts, they into the magic, they into spell, spells. And anytime there's a chosen one that live in the neighborhood and they know there's a chosen one because the spirit bear witness to the truth. When they know y'all are there, when you brothers and sisters are in certain neighborhoods and certain environments, they physically cannot harm you. They can't, they can't physically touch you because the most high gives spiritual laws in place where these people cannot come but so close to you. But what they will do is attack you spiritually. What they will do is they will do certain things. They'll put you on certain lists, neighborhood watch lists. They would, even in some instances, they'll put things outside of your home. They'll sprinkle some kind of dust that they use. They actually use a dust. Um, they put bodily fluids around your property. Um, they may move things around in the middle of the night while everybody sleep like gang stalking is very real it's very very real um for those who are unfamiliar with that term we're talking about organized mobbing uh we're talking about people collectively coming together on one accord to watch one person to somehow test their sanity that's what it's really about 
It's about gaslighting you, getting you frustrated, um, basically making you afraid. They would, the, the end goal would be to either do two things, make you just off yourself because you believe you're losing your mind. Nobody believes you. I'm here to tell you, I believe that a lot of you brothers and sisters have went through this and are going through this, but they don't want you to, they don't want anybody to believe what you witness and what you experience. They want you to seem crazy. The second thing, they want you to be committed. They want you to be in a psych ward. Um, this is what these witches do. They get off and destroying good souls. They get off and destroying light bearers. They get off and destroying something that is righteous. And this is why these individuals often target children as well. Because anything that's pure, they gain power in the spiritual realm from Satan when they destroy that, that thing that is pure, right? Uh, let me go more into these scriptures. And as you can, ladies and gentlemen, just support the content. You know what to do. Isaiah 8 and 19. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead. So we're supposed to be seeking after the most high. These people are into ancestral worship. A lot of your fellow black folks that look like you, right, are actually devils. They're actually demons. And they deal with familiar spirits from the ancestors, demonic ancient spirits they're dealing with relics they're dealing with all kinds of necromancy they are into some despicable things i mean just utterly despicable things i'm talking about these people they drink their own urine i mean these people are some nasty people we're talking about some sick people who sit around burning sage drinking their own urine drawing pentagrams in the middle of the living room uh burning candles you know, taking pictures of you, studying your astrology. They'll study you. Even, listen, them knowing your birth date. They'll study your astrological sign in order to find ways and tactics of trying to somehow get, get you to engage and, and get you out of character. This is what these things, this is what these entities, in, entities do. This is what these demons do. It's very real. They mutter, they peep. Peeping is what you will call mirror gazing or scrying. And they don't like the fact that I get on here and tell you everything they do. They don't like what's being done in the dark to be brung to the light. Mirror gazing is what they do. I'm talking about some mirror, mirror on the wall, snow white type of stuff. And images and, and idols and deities actually pop up into the mirror for them and give them direction on how to attack you. Oh man, this, the forces are real. We cannot be naive as followers of Christ. We cannot be naive as biblical believers. We cannot be naive as chosen ones. You got to know there's a battle against y'all. You jeopardize and compromise their entire way of life. And there's a surge of energy. There's a powerful force moving behind you, brothers and sisters. The Most High God knew you before you was even in your mama's womb. You was here for this purpose. And the demons, they are petrified right now. They're petrified of what you're about to become. They know that you're gonna jeopardize everything that they built for themselves. A lot of these energies and forces, they have lined their pockets up against basically using and exploiting people who don't know no better. So when you step in the scene, brothers and sisters, you compromise everything. You compromise their livelihood. You put everything in jeopardy. Um, the demons that possess them begin to torment them because you became a threat and they don't know how to deal with it right watch this revelations 21 and 8 but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murderers whoremongers sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone which is the second death they're all gonna have their part in a lake of fire. The sorcerers, but notice it says the sorcerers, 
idolaters, whoremongers, liars, liars. There's nothing more than the most high hate than a liar. Somebody who just blatantly lies. This is a form of witchcraft. Remember, the scripture says witchcraft is manipulation. It is the sin of rebellion. So when somebody's lying on you, brothers and sisters, that's sorcery, that's witchcraft. Even if they're not an ordained witch, so to speak. You never seen them in a coven. You never seen them playing with tarot cards, black magic. Sisters, if there's women out there lying on you, brothers, if there's brothers out there lying on you, if there's people out there lying on you, they are witches, 100%. Let's call them for what they are. Acknowledge them for what they are. They are wizards and witches, right? But it also says in the scripture, but the fearful and unbelieving, you cannot be fearful. You're going to have things rise up against you. You're going to have the shadow people and the archons rise up against you time from time. Why? Because you're in this physical world. And although you are taking the right direction as chosen ones, honoring God's laws, trying to do what's right, you know, pleading unto the Father for repentance, for forgiveness, and living a lifestyle that seeks repentance, doesn't mean that you're not going to have the shadow people, archons come and attack. You know why? Because you got to level up spiritually. Sometimes things that come against us are actually used to make us better. It's used as a testament to our overall story. And anytime these spirits come attack, you can't be fearful. This is what you call on the creator for. You cannot be fearful. They don't have as much power as you think they do, right? Somebody said, um, fear a distraction gets you open for attacking. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Somebody said, even writing things in notes, burning, burning these notes is a spell. These things have been going on. You can compare it with Death Note on anime. Real talk. You know, that's interesting you brung that up because in the, in the movie Death Note, the anime story, the Shimigami, the demon that was discussed or talked about in that, the demon called the Shimigami is actually a shadow being. That's actually a shadow person. That's one of the uh, ancient fallen archons, one of the old planetary rulers of death. So that, that's like a really a true story. So it's something that the witches do called spell bounding, where they will write your name on a piece of paper and they will curse your name. They will write all the information they know about you and they will burn the paper and they will do it in a ritual to try to consume your life. They Listen, their goal is to destroy the chosen ones, destroy you. They want you to be dead. They want you to be in a grave. And every time they're able to come against an individual and it works, they celebrate at your grave site. Middle of the night, the witches go through there. Nobody's there. They're in the graveyard celebrating your death, man. That's how wicked these individuals are. Real talk. Samuel, let's go to 1 Samuel 15 and 23. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath rejected you from being a king. Yes. Now notice it said, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. They rebel against the most high. They don't want to, they don't want to tap into the creator, the almighty. They don't want a God with laws and rules. They're stubborn. It says, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is the iniquity of idolatry. Listen, a stubborn person would be corrected in a situation. Let's say there's a misunderstanding with someone in your family or one of your friends. And somehow there's been a discrepancy put out there about you a false accusation of some sort. Some sort of um, issue exists because somebody gave false information, something was misunderstood. And if you as a person clarify the real and you got people who double down on you, those are people those people are stubborn and they they are idolaters. They idolize themselves. 
they are idle with time. They have other forces and entities they answer to. And it wasn't about right and wrong. See, a lot of times you chosen ones believe that right is right, wrong is wrong, which is true. These witches, they are under a delusion. They don't believe that. They live by a different set of rules. They believe if the ends justify the means, then they're able to manipulate, lie, slander, um, whatever it is, if the ends justify the means. By any means necessary, when it comes to garnering power from you, that's the, that's the rules they live by, right? But they don't even realize God's chosen ones, we laying a smack down on demons, right? We, we straight up destroying them in the spirit realm. But this is what it is with these people. If they double down on it, they are idolaters, right? It also says, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, they rejected the truth. He has also rejected thee from being the king. So these individuals won't be the kings and queens. God's chosen will. The Bible said the last shall finish first and the first shall finish last. A lot of, a lot of kings and queens who ruled were evil people. Right? We had some good kings and queens, but a lot of them, when you look into the Bible, a lot of them was practicing other things. Even King Solomon, he fell. He was out here building golden calves in the middle of Judea after he got involved with the witches. This is why I tell you brothers all the time, protect your energy. Protect your energy against these witches. Because, and you sisters as well, some of you sisters grow up in God-fearing households and some of y'all got turned out by the incubus man you got turned out by the wizard and now he got you doing all kind of things that you never thought you would do you experimenting with all kind of things and you know when they say a good girl's gone bad she gone forever but when it comes to these witches man let me tell you something right here like this a lot of brothers on social media they have given in to the divine feminine. Um, like my man Ye said, when it comes to brothers in the truth, in the biblical truth, Jezebel don't stand a chance. What my man Ye say in the song? Jezebel don't even stand a chance. Back up off my people, move your hands. Hey. You and I gonna see that I ain't playing. Hey, come on, man. That's real talk. A man said Jezebel don't even, listen, any brother that's letting these women control them, control the narrative, you are under a, a witchcraft spell. You are under a spell. So you brothers gotta beware. There's a lot of witches out there that come in pretty packages. They, they have mastered the art of manipulation. I've seen some great kings. I'm talking about brothers in the truth. I'm talking about modern day, not just Solomon. We're talking about modern day kings. That's just powerful brothers, powerful orient, orientators, men who have platforms that have a lot of reach. People, I'm talking about men who have a lot of influence. I've watched the divine feminine come in and destroy men's lives. And I'm talking, when I say the divine feminine, I'm talking about the witches. There's some women out here on social media who have a lot of influence. And the reason they do is because they've been, they've been practitioners of the arts. They sold their souls for fame. They've sold their souls for the fame and the fortune. Let's go to Acts 19 and 19. Many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together and burnt them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver. See, this is what they do it for, the money. It's all about the money. They are practitioners of what we call the curious arts. You know, that Walt Disney stuff, the curious arts, the wild whimsical world of Disney. That's what a lot of people have been raised up on. It's, the Bible calls it curious arts. They would do rituals and spells. Why? To get money, silver and gold. That's what it's all about. 
And a lot of these witches and warlocks, they greedy. So much so, they possess things. Material possessions. Some of these witches and warlocks are successful. But they're so greedy and so full of hate and malice and jealousy and envy that they still looking at y'all. The have-nots. They don't even want you to have not. It's not good enough that they have the rudiments of this world, but no, they gotta eat off your plate too. They gotta intentionally ruin what you build too, or it's no satisfaction. It's no satisfaction from the evil one, just to survive and eat and have all of the perks in society, have special treatment, preferential treatment. Some of these people are, are, are awarded Apartments to live in for free, townhouses, they're given all kind of incentives to watch you. There's incentive programs that, that give these people shopping sprees. They get a few thousand dollars just to circle your block every day to make you paranoid and watch you. That's not enough. They got to make sure they, they take it a step further and ruin things in your life. Try to stop your success. Try to close doors of opportunity. Turn people against you. Put your life in danger by putting lies out there. This, I've seen certain brothers who, who went through some of the most horrendous lies told on them. Brothers who still stayed firm and stayed in this truth. And they are living testaments. Because the, what makes them a living testament, some of the lies that have been told on certain people out here could have cost people their lives. It could have cost them their livelihood. It could have cost people souls to rise up against them, but the Lord protected them. Right? Why? Because these brothers and sisters dealt in wisdom. They didn't entertain everything. They didn't go against everything that was being said. Why? Because that's what they want. They want your energy. Second Kings 21 and 6. And he made his sons pass through the fire and observers of times used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. These things are provoking the Almighty to anger. Every battle is not your fight, brothers and sisters. I need y'all to hear me and hear me clearly. Every war that you are faced with is not your war. Because in the sight of the Most High, in the sight of the most high. He looks at their deeds punishable by death. Punishable by death. Sometimes when we got people coming against us, lies, slander, it could be friends, family, coworkers, no matter who it is. There are times where we stand in the way of judgment. No, literally. No, hear what I'm saying. We legit are in the most high's way. Because before they didn't jump stupid, before they calculated the demented actions against you, before anything was manifested physically, the Lord already warned them not to do that. The minister and angels tried to go towards them and say, don't do that, touch them. Touch not my elected, touch not my anointed. Sometimes, listen, we be thinking people be making mistakes when they be evil on purpose. Some of the people in your life, y'all giving them the benefit of the doubt. No, they were evil on purpose. They had a choice before the most high with the ministering spirits and they chose evil. They know what the Lord said about you. They know exactly who you are, chosen ones. They know your light. They know what you're about. And they knew what they were doing. They spit in God's face. They spit in the Almighty's face. You know why? Because these people would rather have $5 million than spend five minutes with the, Lord, with the Lord. Let me say that again. These people would rather have $5 million than spend five minutes with the Lord. Now, what does that mean? That means they rather have riches on this planet. They have the ultimate knowledge that gives them everything. 
they they don't have the desire to have the knowledge of the most high they're idiots when if you spend five minutes with the lord you listen you know all the mysteries of the universe you're getting wisdom and he can give you all of the things all of the things of this earth that's needed to do his will but they choose eternal fire for temporal success so the most high is going to kill them there's going to a lot of a lot of people that y'all going to see die he's going to he's going to put them on a list you chosen ones who've been attacked by these fraternal orders you chosen ones who've been attacked by certain agencies and groups cointel pro any group any type of uh cult group such as some of you are there's brothers and sisters dealing with it with the jehovah witnesses right now mormons people who are waking up into this biblical truth trying to get out of church certain churches i'm gonna tell you right now you're going to be vindicated the almighty is going to vindicate you in the sight of men they're all going to see the almighty's power and they're going to be like wow we just can't come against these people they're going to come to a point where they're going to know that God's people are untouchable, undefeated, and chosen. Oh, we may lose battles. We may lose our cool sometimes. We may go through certain things, but they're going to know. Do not go against those people. Do not. Don't do it. Somebody said, uh, totally understand. Let me see. I think I seen a super chat. Shout out to Floridian Rollo says speaking that real talk the sermon is fire all praises to the most high thank you for the support fam thanks you thank you for the scripture Jeremiah 20 and 11 but the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one therefore my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail they shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper oh yeah they won't prosper at all they didn't trick themselves out of their own souls. The Lord said these people are not going to prosper. We said, he said, listen, they dealing with something terrible by their, our sides. The most high described himself as like, if you think these people are bad, I'm terrible. <laughs> That's how the Lord talk. You think they bad? You think they're lies and Hindu windows, rumors and gossip and, and manipulation and smear campaigns turning people? You think that's bad. You think that's bad what they're doing to you? No, I'm terrible. What I'm going to do to them, words can't even describe the type of torment that I can put these people through. Only thing you got to do is be quiet and stay out the way. Because you can't deal with this. I, listen, here's the thing. No matter how eloquent you are, no matter how tactful you are, no matter how much of an orientator you are, and no matter how much you can verbally dissect an individual, that has nothing on what the Most High going to do. Has nothing on it. Because I can tell you now, a lot of us chosen ones, we are very empathetic. We're very calm. We're very cultural. We're very respectful. But a lot of us, we can eliminate you with our words. A lot of us, we just keep that, we just keep that hell back. But a lot of us, we can totally ruin you with our words. We can, we can literally drill you and tell you, tear you apart. But it don't have nothing on what the Most High can do. This is what I'm learning. I'm, I'm still growing as a person because there's times I can be high-headed. And I realize, man, what we facing. We facing demonic entities, forces, meat suits. These, pe these people don't have souls. They're literally skinwalkers. And anytime progress is going on in life, they will come out of nowhere. They come out from underneath the rocks like creepy crawlers. Y'all know when it rain outside and you lift a rock up and you see all them, them creepy crawlers? That's what these people are. Anytime the land is being purified, there's certain entities out there that want to work against it. Isaiah 47 and 8. It says, Therefore hear now this, Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that saith in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not as a I shall sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Ooh. Wow, wow, wow. It says, those who are given unto pleasures. They dwell carelessly, meaning they don't have a care in the world. 
We talking about those individuals who don't have any issues. They're careless. There was a man who asked a woman who had dementia. He asked this woman, he said, how is it that you have dementia? You never harm nobody. You never spoke ill will towards anyone. You are the best person I've ever known in my life. And here you are, sick, ready to die. And they said, me on the other hand, I'm scandalous. I'm wicked, perverse, I'm evil. I'm the worst type of person. And I don't have a worry in the world. He said that, what kind of God would do that? The woman answered in her dementia stages, as clear as day. She was cognitive of this. She said, sometimes the devil will let you live a careless life so you don't never turn to the most high. Sometimes the devil will let you live carelessly. See, sometimes the devil will keep you in a place where you need to leave. You need to break free from your spell. But it's so nice and comfortable and luxurious that you don't even find the need to leave. You're in a cell, but you don't find the need to leave that cell because it looks pretty in there. And then when it's all said and done, he didn't want your soul. It says, therefore now hear this, thou art that given to pleasures that dwell carelessly. Thou saith in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. They believe that they the epitome of all knowledge and wisdom, the sum of everything that is right. They live in their own truths, my truth, right? It says, and none else beside me, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. I don't care about the loss of those who are less fortunate. I don't care about people who are growing from the bottom and building up. I don't care about the average Joe. I don't care about the loss of children. Uh, they don't care about anything. This is, this is what they say to themselves in their hearts. I'm telling you, these people are gonna be condemned to hell. Yeah, that my truth, it drives, it drives us chosen ones crazy because there only could be one truth, right? Somebody said, uh, watch out, don't let them cook for you either. That is some really good advice. You know, you got to be careful who prepares your meals. Some of you brothers out here dating women and you don't know what type of practices they into. You be out here down bad in a chicken coop. Like Smokey off a of Friday. You be out here down bad, showing up to her house with the shower cap on, with the trench coat, hiding in the bushes, tweaked out. Why? Because that woman has sprinkled something extra in your food. This is why it's important to find out what people are about, man. Somebody said they even goes for restaurants. That's a fact. That's why I like chosen ones, especially you brothers and sisters who have been placed on certain governmental watch lists for whatever reason, maybe the content you posted, maybe something you put on social media, but you feel as if you've been targeted um, by certain agencies. You gotta, you gotta eat out less. Let's be clear about that. You know, I know sometimes you're gonna go out, eat out for whatever reason. If you have good energy and good vibes about that place, do what you gotta do. But you do gotta maneuver in wisdom because there's certain people who get paid under the table to literally poison you. And we wonder why we'll have certain issues, parasites, things of that nature. Witches and warlocks will try to control you through the food. Not to mention you living in a land of the United States of America that they want to secretly, let me, let me just put this out here. They want to force chemicals in your body. I'm just going to tell it like it is. I'm going to say it plain as day. The puppet masters want to force chemicals in your body. Let me give you an example. 
A lot of people don't want the MRA technology in their body. The MRNA technology. A lot of people don't want it. There was a great pushback. So what did your, what did your uh, puppet masters do? They decided to act like children who was told no and find another way. For those who don't know, there's various places in the world right now, various places, uh, farmland in the United States, in case you are, the, are not preview to this news, where the pigs are being inseminated with that very same technology that a lot of y'all refused. So they're like, okay, if we can't get it, if we can't get the people to go out there and do the you know what, we're gonna put it in the food. And guess the name, guess what the name, the number one food they're putting it in, just to show you, just to show you that the most high is just. He's allowing them to inseminate the pigs. He's allowing them to inseminate the pigs, the pork, the swine. Now you got brothers in the truth that been warning people all this time, telling people that you gotta put that nasty pork chop away, you gotta put that swine away. They're gonna put it inside of the animal that carry the most parasites, why? So it can carry that parasite into your body, so it can actually latch on, so the more gallons can latch on to your bloodstream. We've been telling y'all. So they, listen, there's gonna be a lot of people who already are gonna be carried covering the, the prerequisite to the mark of the beast because they done went down and they been went to their grocery store. You ain't have to go nowhere and get you know what it. You ain't have to do that. Nah, cause you went down to your daily farmers, you went to your daily market, your, your um, grocery store or whatnot, and you went and got that, that, that gravy smothered pork chop and now you got all kind of altered DNA. And that's just because the most high God told you he had dietary laws that you live by. And I don't want to get off subject, but here, this is how they do. This whole system is witchcraft, P poison and, and, and intoxifying you, chemtrails all over the sky. So if they're doing this on a grand scale, if on a grand scale, this is what they got going on, what do you think? people who are practic practitioners of certain etymologies and ideologies are doing. If you sit down and have dinner with them and you're not careful, what do you think they're doing when they prepare the food for you? Oh, they're gonna sprinkle something extra. These things go on in households all the time, man. Somebody said, damn, I love fried chicken. I didn't say nothing about fried chicken. What I said was clear as day, they're getting the pigs, they're getting the pork. Somebody said they're definitely around me in droves, right? Somebody said, I do virtual hugs, no more pig meat for me for quite a while. Now praise God, no, forever. What do you mean for quite a while? See, see these are the things that I don't understand with people. You're not supposed to be lukewarm. God has dietary laws telling you not to eat swine's flesh. Why would you just not eat it? Because there's some type of uh, issue going on with it right now. Why would, I mean, what are we talking about here? Turn away. You got to repent. I, it's like if you continue living in sin, that grace may abound, the Most High is going to deal with you. The thing is, it's going to get worse. It ain't going to get no better. They're going to find new ways of delivering toxins and chemicals so if anything you should be trying to weed off a lot of things or at the very least t uh, basically slow down your meat intake all together learn how to build your body up off of uh plant-based to a degree and only eat meat sometimes listen too much of anything is bad the bible tell you too much meat is bad for you so it should come a time where we don't rely on eating meat every day when we can go four days, five days, a week without eating meat. We're not supposed to be constantly eating meat. It'll destroy your stomach, for real. Yo, thanks for the 20, it says, our eyes, ears, stomach, noses, etc., all being attacked. Yup, to get to our souls. I have improved a lot since I put bacon away, great message, breed, all praises. Right. You know what's crazy? I can distinctly remember some years ago when I stopped eating pork, 
several years ago, uh, actually more than a decade ago, when I stopped eating it, it was probably like a week after putting pork down. I started hearing screams in my sleep. Like, not hearing screams like I was being attacked, but hearing screams as, as if something was leaving my body. Like, literally, I heard, I was in cold sweats, I was asleep, I heard a feminine scream like in my brain, it, it had echoes and everything. As I was halfway in sleep, I was like kind of like lucid dreaming. And whatever that was, it like left. It left my body after like maybe a week and a half, two weeks of not eating pork. It left, or it may have been a little long, it may have been like a month and some change. But I heard, I heard the demons leave. Food carries frequencies. Food carries vibrations. It carries energies. Why would you want a nasty pig? What did Christ cast demons into? The swine. A whole herd of pigs. Pigs, and it's nothing new of them being a host for certain spirits. It's nothing new. That's why I be telling people, put away that stuff, man. People can, listen, you can keep your self under a demonic spell just eating the wrong thing. Real talk. Yep, shrimp. Oyster, lobster, all of that as well. Bottom feeders. Somebody said, uh, I gave up the seafood, crab, shrimp, that's what's up. Said it was difficult. Well, I'm glad you was able to remain disciplined. Yeah, but these witches, man, they out of, they out of pocket, man. These warlocks, they're under control of the witches. There's a lot of uh, Ahabs walking around here. And y'all gotta understand witchcraft come in various forms. Just like right now, right? I'm telling you about a vegetarian diet. Some of y'all are gonna start looking into herbalistic treatments for certain ailments. Even with that, you gotta be careful. Cause there's a lot of witches that's posing as herbalists, bro. They're posing as herbalists, people who are genuinely trying to help you. We're talking about some of the most soft-spoken people, some of the most articulate people who seem to be kind-hearted. They have a certain disposition about themselves, and they will really be witches. They know they, they're into all kind of roots and spells and all of that. And you just going out there to certain places trying to get your herbs, get your vitamins, get your nutrients, and it's a whole witch rule in that. And they, they dealing with different spirits and things like that. So you got to even look out for that. Like, I'm telling you, man, when the Bible says that we will be in a world going through some troublesome times and we will be outcasted and feel like, yo, how do we even maneuver through this? Because there's so much wickedness. And man, the Lord was not lying, bro. It's just so much you got to look out for spiritually. You got to guard your souls out here. You really do. Somebody said, uh, demons dwell in dark, evil places. They love darkness, right? And they don't like when you put what they do in the dark, put it to the light. They don't like the fact that I'm telling a lot of you brothers and sisters what people are up to when they call in your phone, trying to get you out of character for no reason. They're trying to extract energy from you. They're bottom feeders. They cannot live without being parasites. They cannot live without your glow. Listen, they want you to be disoriented. They want you to feel, they want your mind to be dysfunctional. They don't want you to be able to really have clarity and peace. They want to disrupt progress. This is their goal. The black devils, we talking about the black devils too. A lot of black devils that just want to stop progress. They don't want to see nothing good happen in your life. They don't want you to be at peace. Listen. The Lord gives you a sound mind, not fear, not anxiety, not stress, none of it. And this is what these witches and warlocks fail to realize. No matter what they do, no matter how much uh, sorcery and divination and magic and spells that they do, we chosen ones of the almighty, the God of Israel, we have a sound mind. We at peace. We eating good, sleeping good. We enjoying our time in the sun, relax in the sun, low as possible. 
We loving our lives. We loving our families. We overcoming every wicked thing that comes against us. No weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. They don't understand that. Like the book of Ephesians say, we have, gained, we have grabbed the armor to protect us against their fiery darts, their insults, their disparaging comments, their lies, their innuendos, their backbiting. We have, we have got, got the armor. We have our shield and our buckler. And we loving our lives. And a lot of the chosen ones, we looking good while we doing it. If we look like half of the things that we've been through, we'd be looking like some of them witches and warlocks. Real talk. And it's not an outside thing. It's, it's an inner glow. It ain't about a physical look. Oh no, it's, a, it's an outside. It's an inside glow. It ain't on us either. It's in us. Imagine that. Every time they see you chosen ones living your lives and, and winning and enjoying your day and, and coming up and doing great things, every time they see it, their hearts palpitate. Their blood pressure go up. Their heart get to beating real fast. That's the, uh, that feeling right there that they get when they see you winning, that little anxiety they get, that is dark matter. That's dark matter from the underworld being pumped through their veins. That's the dark matter filling their body up. That's death. Literally, death is being released in their bodies. Their hatred for you is releasing death, all kind of cancers, all kind of cancers. And, and all kind of sicknesses and plagues. Listen, let me tell you something. You got to pray against witches and warlocks. Listen, the most high, I don't know how people think our God is, but you need to read the book of Psalms of how David prayed against his enemies. David was like, Lord, destroy them, kill them, curse their children, curse their offspring, curse their lineage, curse their families. Take them out, take their firstborn sons out. Like, like, listen, plague them with sicknesses because they are coming against your work, Father. They're coming against the will of God. They're trying to stop and disparage the chosen. Lord, they are setting snares for me. Lord, they want my head. They want blood. Lord, kill them. All of the ditches that they dig, Lord, dig those. Let them fall into the same plots they dig. Lord, kill them. Destroy them. Plague them with sickness. Lord, riddle their bodies with sicknesses. Don't allow them to be successful with destroying what's righteous. Like, like, I'm telling you, our God don't be playing. It's like, I don't think they know who they dealing with. I done seen so many people removed after the Most High's people warned them. Like, I'm warning you. And it's not even taken serious. I don't think they understand how much power we have. Especially you men of Yah out here who doing the Father's work. The most I chose you to do his work. You are very powerful. Look at the other biblical patriarchs. Look at some of the prayers that they had against the so-called powers that be that were trying to ruin them. Man, you have the power to line people up. I done seen people removed. I done seen brothers warn other content creators here on YouTube about their ways. Seen them warn them. And next thing you know, they out of here. They no longer alive. Literally, they died. Nobody's seen it coming. You got brothers in the truth warning certain people. What happened? They died. That's it. Nobody's seen that coming. Nobody expected that. Nobody ever expect people to just pop up dead. You know how many people in the space that just one minute you here, next minute you not? Like, people better stop playing with life and going against the wrong people. Yo, Glock, thanks for the $20. Says, be careful when you're receiving gift, food from some of those people. It could actually be cursed. That's true. Thank you for the advice. That's real talk. And you can expect those to hate. You can expect people to, to rise up against you if you're doing something right. Whatever you may be do. What my man Pac said. Rule number one. No, he said rule number two. Ninjas gonna hate you for whatever you do. Ain't that what he said on one of the tracks? Rule number two. Ninjas gonna hate you for whatever you do. It don't matter what it is you do. Y'all brothers and sisters gotta understand. There's a lot of people who already have preconceived notions about you. 
Ain't nothing you can do to change that. You cannot change people's opinion on you. You're wasting your try time trying to change, change their thoughts. Just accept it. And whoever they corrupt in the process, whoever they turn up against you, were never meant to be with you in the first place. If people are able to turn people against you, those people were never for you. In the spirit realm, they were already designed to be created to be a foe. You're supposed to have foes. You're supposed to have people that go against you. The Lord said, ye be hated for my name's sake. So you're wasting your time trying to convince people who already hate you. They're designated and designed to be that way. I need y'all to understand that. Only thing you're doing is giving them power because it shows that, you know, they on your radar. Let me tell you something. And I'm going to say this bold as day. And I'm going to speak this directly to everybody on social media watching, right? Chosen ones. They are not worthy of being your foe. They are not worthy of being your enemy. There's no one on YouTube who is a formidable opponent for any man of Yah. I'm talking about a real man of Yah, a man who's taking care of his family, responsibilities, uh, doing what it is he's supposed to do as a man, going against the grain, not selling his soul, not compromising, not doing his people dirty, not swindling, not jugging, not doing nothing wrong, but living their life. Of course, they have issues. Everybody has problems and things they go through. But I'm saying overall righteous people who are of Yah, listen, there is no formidable opponents. I can tell you right now. A lot of times there's people I don't go back and forth with. Why? Because they're unworthy. They're unworthy of my attention. They don't even hold a candle to this blowtorch that's over here. It's, it's not even a point. Later on, I feel foolish even stooping down to, to the level of certain people. At the end of the day, I will, I, it's times that I feel foolish even going there because it's like they're not even on my level spiritually intellectually so that's what you got to know brothers and sisters they are not even on your level like they're not formidable opponents they don't deserve it they are peasants y'all are royal priesthood a peculiar people y'all are pure royalty out here y'all actually carry yourselves with dignity you know when i look on social media there's not a lot of people who are dignified think about that word dignity being dignified Put the definition of the word dign dignity up there in the chat. Somebody throw the word definition for dignity. Because this is an attribute and a characteristic that you don't see on social media. So when a person, uh, when a person is real, ha is integral, and uh, it's a lot of disingenuous evildoers out there, man, you're going to stand out in this life, y'all. Somebody said 304s casting spells on men. They don't even want real talk. They're only doing it for power. There's a power grab going on. Yeah, put the definition of dignity, self-respect. That's one word for it, but I want the real, the whole definition. The whole definition. State of quality of being worthy of honor or respect. That's what I was looking for. The state of quality of being worthy of honor and respect. Now, how many people do you see on social media, just in general, in general, not even social media, in life, who have dignity, worthy of respect? Not too many people. There's certain women out here who are worthy of respect, and they are few and far in between. People be thinking I have some type of malice towards women. No, it's just that a lot of women aren't worthy of my respect. They have not proven themselves to be worthy. They are not, they are not imams. An Ema is like a mother, a, a, a nurturer of the nation, a, a respectable woman, a chaste modest, a keeper of home, a keeper of her hut. It's not too many women who are like that. It's not too many men that I see online who are worthy of dignity, worthy of respect, who have showed themselves to be honorable. No, we're dealing with a lot of shock jocks and weirdos who would say anything to make a buck. We're dealing with a bunch of greedy people who are not content with food, clothes, shelter, and raiment, but they gotta have everything. And by any means necessary, no matter how much they embarrass themselves, no matter how much they embarrass other people, no matter how much they destroy others, they're willing to do it. They're not, they're not worthy of my dignity. They're not worthy of my respect.
So I would never even acknowledge somebody. Even, listen, even when it comes to warfare, when it comes to warfare, you have to have some respect for your enemy for you to even engage them. I don't even respect these people to engage them. That's how you really show a lack of respect for them, when you don't even engage them. When you just leave it alone. They can be blatantly wrong, lying, manipulating, slandering. Just ignore them. It ain't worth it. It just ain't worth it. Somebody said, uh, you are right, and it's gross. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but you're right. It is gross, their behaviors. Somebody said, uh, oh, thanks for the 10, Joshua. Says, uh, Newbury, my wife has been sleeping with another man for three months. She wants another chance, and my father said to forgive any advice. Man, um, you know, that is one of those situations that's really up to you. You have to use your discretion. Your father gave you some advice that uh, you can either take or leave. Personally, only thing I could do is tell you personally what I would do. Personally, I would leave that woman alone. Um, she, at this point, after another man deals with your woman, she's no longer your woman. That's just my take on this. Now, some, some brothers, they forgive and they stay married and it is what it is. And I'm not here to judge, browbeat, or shame you if that's what you decide to do. But in all honesty and all sincerity, um, I, there's no way. There's no way that I would deal with that woman no more, even though I'm a man who has concubines. My concubines ain't allowed to deal with no other man. If they were get, to get caught doing something with another man, that's it. Even though their position in my life is a concubine, if I find out about something like that, that's it. They will be replaced. So, I mean, I can honestly say, coming from me personally, I wouldn't take her back. No, not at all. That's it. And that's just me personally. Whatever you decide to do, that's on you. But I can't give you advice in that. Real talk. Somebody said concubine question mark. Look it up. That's what Webster's is for. If you don't know what a concubine is, look it up. In short, it's a part-time wife. Somebody said, yeah, I kind of feel like my child's mother does a black magic because she reads those tarot cards. Oh, man. It shouldn't even be a matter of you feel like she does black magic. No, brother. She does black magic. <laughs> tarot cards are black magic, sir. So you saying you feel like she do black magic because she play with tarot cards. No, sir. She does black magic. You need to get, you need to either get out of that situation or break it down to her, what she's practicing and have her put away her ways. If she don't, y'all unequally yoked, bro. And she's, she's definitely practicing witchcraft. Now you're gonna have to explain that to her. Not telling you go attack her or anything like that. Of course, you gotta be direct and serious with the matter, but you know, don't, don't cause a problem in your household where y'all end up, you know, going to war because you can better believe when you are, when you are basically calling out somebody's evil, Especially one of these witches. You don't know how she's going to act in that situation. You, could, you may just pull her to the side to talk about it. Look, babe, I don't want you doing that. A demon might jump straight out of her. A demon may manifest on her right at that moment when you say something about, baby, I don't want you doing this because there's a stronghold there. So you got to see how she's going to act. She may get really angry and upset and start fighting you. Real talk. Somebody said, once a cheat, always a cheat, unless the person is willing to change for the better. Yeah, I mean, it's not too often where people change when it comes to that. Uh, but nonetheless, that's that, brother's that's that brother's decision. And whatever he chooses to do, that's what he chooses to do. But you know, it is what it is, man. Um, all praises to the Almighty. I didn't even realize that we've been live for an hour. When the Holy Spirit is present, we are always 
in the in the zone and time be just flying man if everybody can do me one solid let's get the likes to over a thousand just pound the like button before you leave out um oh by the way there's somebody running around uh posing as me they have a whatsapp thing going on listen i do not have no whatsapp group i have not promoted no whatsapp group i have not invited anybody to a whatsapp group please do not be foolish and send your money off and get scammed like there's so many people hitting me up getting scammed like i don't know what type of issue y'all issues y'all are having but some of y'all act like y'all just learned the internet y'all acting like y'all just learned how to log in line and use youtube y'all acting like you just learned how to use instagram like seriously i have a whole email in my description box of every video like i have a personal email i have an instagram i have my own website newbreed.love that has a, a chat box i have yahwagather.us where i have a group there's so many methods where you can literally reach out to me and notice me but y'all falling for a profile that has no followers no supporters that just uses my emblem and they able to swindle y'all i don't understand that literally the people who have hit me up about that i have not responded to you because it's foolish that you fell for that it, it is it's embarrassing that you even reached out to me to tell me that you fell for that that's embarrassing so i'm telling you now it's not me if you see anybody comment to you in the comment box that has my emblem on it do yourself a favor click on the emblem click on it if it goes to another channel that has two subscribers that's not me they're just using my emblem i have reported them several times they keep them coming back with new profiles so please protect yourself be use some discernment and wisdom when you online look i love each and every one of y'all i want y'all to have a blessed afternoon with that being said shalom and peace